I'm used to preaching all that. I'm like, we were just in New Jersey, and in the middle of the sermon, the Lord told me to speak on holiness, and so I started to talk about uh, what the Lord had told me, and the power went out. So I finished my sermon an hour and 10 minutes without power, without lights. So I, I'm used to speaking without a microphone if I had to yell. I found out that this city we were in is where uh, George Whitfield used to preach to 10,000 people. And so we went to his church the next day where he stood on the outside of the church and spoke to 10,000 people on that street. And so it's all about the breath of God. You know, when God breathed into man, we became a living soul. We became alive. And tonight, God breathed on us again by His Spirit. And He did that for a reason. Because He wants fellowship. He wants to engage us. And we engaged Him, and now He wants to engage us. And so, there's, there's a bunch of questions that the Lord wants to answer for you tonight. And... Um, I'm not into, there's a couple things I don't like to do. I don't like to talk about myself, and I don't like to take offerings. And I don't like to drive. I like to fly. <laughs> so, if I'm flying, I'm happy. If someone else takes the offering, I'm happy. <laughs> someone else talks about me, but I, you know, as long as I don't hear it. <laughs> the Holy Spirit in South Africa one day, I was, I was talking, I said I twice in a row. And the Holy Spirit audibly said to me, if you say I one more time, I'm going to leave and go over there and I'm going to wait until you're done talking about yourself. Because I wasn't sent to talk about you. I was sent to bring everybody to Jesus. Everybody to the Father. I said, well, that won't happen again. <laughs> so I'm sorry for not formally introducing myself. I'm, um, me and my wife, Kathy, have been um, in ministry now almost two years. Um, 23 years, I went, worked for a pastor, a couple different pastors, started a couple churches, and they never knew that I had gone to heaven. They never knew that this thing had happened because I never was allowed to talk about it. And 20, 23 years went by, and finally the Lord uh, appeared to me and said, it's time to write that book. So I wrote the book, and um, I told my wife, I said, someday I want to be interviewed on TBN by Jesse DePlanis because he went to heaven. And I said, so if I ever get interviewed on TBN, I want it to be that guy named Jesse DePlanis because he would understand some of the things I went through. And so as the story goes, I was on a tour of his ministry and he came out of his office and shook my hand and that's how it all started. Next thing you know, I'm on TBN with him and he's interviewing me. And then Sid Roth saw that interview and called me with the help of special people here on the front road. Chuck and Mary Volm <laughs> also helped me as well to get things going. So me and my wife, uh, we had careers. We worked for 29 years at our career. And um, she had a business, and I worked for an airline. And... At the end of the 29 years, the breath of God just started to move on us in a different way. And that's kind of our story. I had a visitation of the Lord back in 1992, and I wasn't allowed to talk about it for all these years. And, and then this, is, this, this night, that tonight, is very special because God has shifted. He shifted into the next phase. And it's happened tonight as we were worshiping him. But you know, there's always things going on. I mean, you know, you know, you know that, right? You know that a lot of you are behind the curve. And uh, you know, when I was in when I was with Jesus, I found out that he was waiting on me to mature. And it had to do with revelation. It had to do with what Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. You know, if you remember in the book of Acts, the Ephesians were steeped in witchcraft. And when they repented, you know, I said that word in church, repent. Because Jesus explained to me that, that any time that I look away from Him and focus on anything but Him, I need to repent. I need to turn my face back and behold His face. 
if I am not looking at him and my focus is not him, then, then I need to repent. I need to turn 180 degrees. I need, did you hear me? So, so repentance is coming back to the church. Or we're going to apologize to Ananias and Sapphira one by one. Okay, and then the altars, the holy altars are coming back to the church. Humility and brokenness is coming back to the church. Do I need to go through all the ingredients that Jesus gave me for a revival? You know, I don't even like to use that word because if my heart's working fine, I don't need somebody to put clampers on me and say, clear. If my heart's working good, I don't need revived. Revival's for dead people. And I don't know anybody in this room that's dead, <laughs> spiritually or physically. Now, let me, let me tell you where I'm going with this. One day I, uh, on a flight, someone died. And they don't know how long he had been dead. They thought he was sleeping, but he was, I mean, he had no blood flowing through him. He had no breath, no heartbeat. So I just laid him on the aisle floor and, and went to work. No breath, no heartbeat. And, um, you know, I'd been to heaven. So I looked at the wife. She just sobbing, you know, and, and I can still hear her heart cry. She just lost her husband. And something happened to me. I, I, does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's when you have to go from your limitations into God's realm, and you have to reach beyond your own limitations. It's called being a Christian, a normal Christian. <laughs> it's when you, you reach into the supernatural, which is really your natural. You're just being told it's supernatural because, you know, you're surprised when it happens. You're surprised when God actually shows up or answers your prayer. Well, that's what happened to me. I should know better. He is the resurrection and the life. Every time that he went to a funeral, he ruined it. <laughs> because he's the resurrection and life. If it's not a person's time, he just reverses the curse. Which is what he did on the cross for us. Okay, but getting back to the airplane, I... I, you know, I'm a minister, you know, and I shouldn't even be at this job because I'm a minister, you know. And I went through all the training and became an expert until I met Jesus, and then I became a little pert, about this big. And when I came back, I didn't even want to look at my degrees on my wall anymore. I want to look at him because I thought he knows stuff that I don't know. And did you know how much I said in 45 minutes that I was with him? I said one thing. I said, you are the most misunderstand person on the earth. <laughs> You're nothing like what people say you are. You're far above, exceedingly above. So I looked at his wife and I said, are you Christian? Because I could see the glory of God on her. And she said, yes. I said, is your husband? She said, yeah. I said, can I pray for him? Because well, I couldn't get him breathing or a heartbeat. So I'd gone beyond, you know, my certification in CPR. <laughs> but something else happened inside of me. And I thought, well, you know, so I laid my hand on his chest. And I started out in the soul. I said, Father, I just received this man into your arms, you know, the nice prayer that a minister would pray. And out of my spirit came, come back. In the name of Jesus. Now, what would, what would do that? The kingdom would do that. The kingdom of God took over. And I went beyond my ability. And that man woke up. Not only that, he got back in his seat. And when we got there, he wouldn't let the ambulance guys take him out on the gurney. He wanted to walk. And then I realized something. When a demon leaves, I think that that's easy. But raising the dead, that's hard. Until I met a man 
who was the resurrection and the life. And he was inside of me, and he said, excuse me, I'll take over from here. Because we're not having a funeral. Is there anybody here? Okay. Well, something shifted tonight. And I learned something. I have, I, have, I have learned something from every person I have ever met. I have never not learned something. Now, sometimes, 80% of the time, I learn what not to do through other people. <laughs> but, and I want to ask them, have you been living in a cave? You know, because, you know, have you been raised by wolves? You know, <laughs> why are you acting the way you do? But no, I learned something from everybody. But there's a teacher inside of you. He's this Holy Spirit. And he's wanting to show you what he is doing in his realm. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus had all authority. He, he made you. He made me. He formed the universes. And yet, he never spoke anything while he was on this earth unless his father told him to. Okay? He understood authority. And then he said, another one's coming just like me, the Holy Spirit, but he's not going to speak on his own either. He's only going to speak what the Father's saying. So the works I do, they're the Father's. That's what he said. He didn't take credit for anything. So is it really your ministry? <laughs> is it really, you know, because it's embarrassing that I was a minister and I wasn't operating in maturity in the Spirit. So Paul prayed for these people, these Ephesians, in Ephesians, well, in Ephesus, in the, in the book of Acts, these people repented. And 50,000 pieces of silver's worth of, of, of these books that were satanic curse books, you know, witchcraft, were burnt right there. And Paul prayed for them in first, uh, the first chapter of Ephesians. He said, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. I pray that you would have a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He said, I pray that you would know the glorious inheritance that's in the saints. You see? And on and on it goes about the power that rose Jesus from the dead. That's what Paul prayed for them. And I got to the place just like you're going to get to tonight. There's a shift that happened. Now, when this happens, you have to go on because the door behind you just shut. You can't go back. Now, what do you want for this region? It would be what God is doing in this region. Well, he's saying some things. He's busting it wide open in this region right now. But he's doing it. He's doing it everywhere. You should see what's happening in, in Switzerland, in Germany, in Italy. It's, it's, it, there's people everywhere that are just like you. And God just needs four crazy friends to lower somebody down through a roof. And there's more than four in here. And we only need two. So he, the truth of it is, is that your eyes have been enlightened. Because the Spirit of God, He loves to do His thing. But He needs you to yield. Now, like I was saying last night to the secret meeting that most of you don't know about, <laughs> I was saying, listen, out of you is going to flow rivers of living water. But that is flowing out of you. So you're not here to be a vacuum cleaner. You're here to let the Spirit of God flow out of you like you did in worship. You do that during the service. If you do that, there's going to be such a move of God tonight. Because it's not really about us. It's about Him. And um, if we are crucified with Him, then we will live with Him. And this is what Jesus told me. I mean, help me out here. He said, everybody wants resurrection power. They want to experience the power of God. He said, but nobody wants to die. And even Smith Wigglesworth, you know, I mean, I, I, he, he, I mean, it's documented. I think I've heard different numbers, but let's just say 37 people raised from the dead. 
But he said God mowed over him until the smith just disappeared. He said he found himself in wit's end corner. He said, but you show me a man in wit's end corner and I'll show you a man that God could use. Hmm. So, a couple months ago, I, I met a man. He's had 37 people raised from the dead. He's, he, he's alive right now. And I'm, I'm getting ready to film a program, and then he's right after me. And he comes up to me. I mean, this guy's like the Apostle Paul. He, he looks in my eyes, he goes, I want to see if Jesus is in there. He goes, yep. I go, oh boy. <laughs> you all better yield because you're going to get full of joy here in just a couple seconds. Just a couple seconds. He goes, he goes, all this stuff you guys are doing here, this, is, this isn't real. He says, where I'm at is real. He says, I raise people from the dead. And I'm surprised when they don't come back. I go, okay. He says, how many people have you had risen from the dead? I go, one. <laughs> he goes, this isn't real. He says, what I'm doing is real. And I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> but this is necessary too, I thought, you know. Anyway, I did my show. He's waiting for me when I come off the set because he's next. And he said some amazing things to me. But you know what he said to me and his son? He said, down there where we're at, the churches, we have to teach people to listen to their elders because the elders, the people that are in their 90s, close to 100, they don't want to be risen from the dead when they die. And people are raising them from the dead. He's trained his whole church to raise people from the dead. So they have meetings, and the elderly stand up, and they tell the people, I'm about to go. Do not resurrect me. <laughs> he's trained. He's replicated his ministry in others. And that's why I was sent back. I was sent back to replicate. And then when I get the call and say that I'm not needed anymore, I'll say, fine. Because I can't, we, we can't even take what the invites, we'll never get to all the invites. But here's the thing, if Jesus really is the resurrection, then there ought to be resurrection happening. If he's really the healer, then there ought to be some healing happening. If he is the spirit of life, and if his breath, his very breath is spirit in his life, then we ought to experience his life. The Jesus I met, he is very, very careful about what he says because he gets everything he says. So he doesn't say things he doesn't mean because he can create things by his words. And he actually, do you know he actually wrote Mark eleven twenty three 23, and 24? It's because he, he's already done all that. I'm going to fall over. I am going to fall over right now. Because the same person that spoke you into existence wrote a book about you. Signed it. And now is waiting for his enemies to become his footstool. He's sitting on his throne right now, and he's waiting for us to wake up and engage. Now, I'm just going to speak by the Spirit. Because there's nothing else to do. I hope you didn't come to hear me. Because I died. If you want to know how to live, you got to die. 
you got to turn away from your own agenda and your house will fill up with angels. Immediately they will be notified, okay, he's done. He, he, he or she's done with themselves. We can work with them now. Anybody that's ever been used of God has died to themselves. Jesus started it, but he started it before he died. He said, if you, if you are going to love me, he said, if you're going to love me, he said, you are going to deny yourself, you're going to pick up a cross, and you're going to follow me. That takes passion. That takes being convinced. So he taught me how to turn a mega church into a small Bible study. So he said, he said too many people were following him for the wrong reasons. They were following him because they got fed and because they saw miracles. And so Jesus turned to them and said, if you don't drink my blood or eat my flesh, you have no part of me. Why did he do that? He was thin in the herd. Well, you know, I think he had 12 left. And these guys had left everything to follow him. And he said, are you going to leave me too? And he, they said, where would we go? You have the words of life. Now, what did they say about him? They said, he's not like the Pharisees. He speaks with authority. See, these, these are things that Jesus obtained for us. So the Spirit of God is saying some things tonight that's beyond my notes. It's beyond even the books that I'm writing years from now. I'm already starting 2020. I've already got 2019 done. I've got 2020 now that I'm writing. Because God's saying stuff. But he's in your future, and it's his now. And he has no problem with your future. Because he's staring at it right now. I, I was told, because someone, someone that was taking care of, of Albert Einstein, she wanted to witness to him. So she said, I just want to know that you know God and you know Jesus. And he said, he was, he was doing all these computations on, on paper. And he goes, oh yeah, I know him. He said, in fact, I'm, I'm catching him at his work right now because he's doing stuff. <laughs> he's, he's moving. She said, he, he, was, he was figuring out. He said, his prayer was, God, take me to where you sit so I can see the universe from your position. Famous quote of his. See, anybody, anybody that's ever done anything from God has lost their own agenda. Now, I, this, this, a conference, this conference is about angels on paper only. <laughs> because every angel I've ever met doesn't want to be talked about. They don't want to be noticed. They're like my special forces friends. If, they get, if, they, if people know that they were in their country, you know, not their own, someone else's, <laughs> they failed. There are people that I know that are heroes that will never be celebrated because their job was never to be known. Do you get that? Yeah. If, they, if they were not caught, they succeeded. And that's where the angels are. But angels were created to serve God and to serve us. Did you know that? Yeah. They're sent to serve those are going to inherit salvation. They're ministering for us. They're ministering to us. The thing that would make Jesus so happy is if you would just get over yourself and, and engage the agenda of God for your life. It's that simple. Ooh, because you think two-day delivery of Amazon is amazing, but if you had two hour, I've had one hour with Amazon. My friend, he came up and stayed with us in Seattle, and he said, man, I forgot my shampoo, and it's a special shampoo. And I'm thinking, you're a guy. 
You could use you could use dish soap. No, really, you know what I mean. Guys could just use dish soap. It's fine. I said, "What's the name of it?" He goes, "Why?" I go, "I'm going to order it for you." He goes, "Yeah, but I need it now." I said, "Is is an hour okay?" He goes, "What?" I go, "I pulled out my phone and I went, is this it?" He goes, "Yeah." I go, "Click one hour delivery," because I lived in Seattle and the and the place was like less than an hour away. And I kid you not, in an hour the UPS, bing, not UPS, but it was some you know. DHL, whatever, you know, LDL, I don't know. But he like, this is amazing. But this guy, this guy, when he walked in our house, he drove the whole way up from Phoenix to our house in Seattle. Now, what he didn't know was uh, we, had, we had had angel visitation in this house. We had had prayer time for our pastor where we spent hours and hours and hours interceding for our pastor in this one spot in front of the fireplace and anybody we've had several people visit us when they would walk through that spot they would fall and and there was there was no there was no band playing there was no offering nobody waved their jacket nobody breathed into the mic no no seriously you know like we didn't get it like you know get a you know Bam. So this guy, this guy, he comes in and he's like, oh my God. He's like looking around, man, what a house. Walks right through that. Bam. And he's just laying there. There was nothing spiritual happening, but something happened there before. What happened there before? Heaven, heaven was opened there. And it didn't matter that that person wasn't aware of it. Now think about this. Abraham built an altar in Bethel. Isaac visited it, his son. And then Jacob, the third generation that always forgets God, is tired. And so he just grabs a rock and falls asleep. And he sees angels descending and ascending on, on this ladder. And he wakes up, and this is what he says. I did not know that God was in this place. But he should have. Oh, come on now. He should have. You see, he had a heritage and an inheritance. He had a covenant by default in his case. But nonetheless, it still happened anyway. So I have to announce to you, you're actually writing off of a previous generation's prayers. And boy, is this next generation, boy, are they going to they gonna encounter God like never before because of us. Because we're, we're engaging him. Oh boy, it's going to get hot in here. Y'all better hold on. You see, you move into the place that was already made for you. Now, when I was with Jesus, he made this very clear. His passion is his people. He did this whole thing for the Father. He bought back God's family. That's you. Now, he gave us, he said, to those who believe. He gave them the power to become children of God. Yeah, it's in the Bible, 1 John, I mean, John 1, 12. He gave them the power to become sons of God. Okay, that word there is exosia. It's not dunamis. Which means authority. He gave them the authority to be sons of God. That, does authority have to do with feelings? You know what? I, 
I stop for a 110-pound cop as much as I do for a 245-pound cop. When he puts his hand up, I stop. Why? Because it's the, it's the authority that that badge carries. It's not his weight. I could pick him up over my shoulder. I'd spend the night in jail, but I could do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. It's the same with Jesus. If Jesus said, I want you to go forth, I want you to preach the gospel, I want you to heal the sick, raise the dead, all in the same breath he said that, and drive out devils, then that's what we do. We don't wait for the apostle to come to town. We don't wait for the prophet to come to town. We don't wait for our pastor to pray for us. We engage God wherever we're at, and it's not based on feelings. Authority, come on. Are you going to get so I can go on, please? I got, I got notes to read here. <laughs> Authority doesn't have anything to do with feelings. Oh, man. What, what, what's your heart's desire? What's your passion? Do you know there's a devil assigned to destroy that? Whatever it is that you're supposed to take out in this life, it's, I guarantee it's hounding you right now. Now, I only have friends around me that do not limit me. If I have to say shut up, I say it, and then we don't talk that much anymore. Come on now. I, was, I thought I was a hot pilot when I had a Cessna 172, but in a dive, the thing couldn't go over 140. And then I experienced five or 600 miles an hour. I couldn't believe it. If I didn't watch it, there are planes that at the end of the runway, they're already going 450 knots at the end of the runway. You have to have your gear up as soon as you leave the ground in F-16 because at 300 knots, you overstress the gear if it's still down. So you have to put it up right away. And at the end of the runway, you're at 450 knots. And you can pitch up and go to 33,000 feet straight up. And then you're going to have to land because you burn all your fuel, but that's beside the point. <laughs> you should see it, 16,000 pounds Per, per, per uh, minute. So you got like five or six minutes. Then you go to the refuel or you, you land. But the performance that you're encountering is nothing compared to what Jesus bought for you. You have to get to the place where you don't have to look for devils. They come looking for you. And you have authority, which doesn't have to do with feelings. And I'm serious. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I'm helping you all out here. When the devil says something to me, which is very rarely anymore, I go, you're kidding. That's it? That's all you got? That's what I say to him. And he just sits there and blinks <laughs> because he doesn't have a plan B. Is anybody listening to me? Do you want to talk about Noah's Ark and the fluffy animals and stuff like that? Or do you want to talk about if you do what, it, what counts tomorrow morning when you wake up, does the devil know who you are? I'm talking about authority. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. Now, now, be honest with me. Be honest with me. If you were given, like Jesus was given, 40 extra days of ministry, did you know that? He died, was risen from the dead, and then it says he ministered for 40 days. Jesus asked me, he said, you might want to take note of what I chose as a subject if I was given an extra 40 days. So I, in, in the book of Acts, it says he taught on the kingdom of God. I said, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, man, I'm going to fall. <laughs> oh, man, y'all just need to jump in because we can just go back to worship. I'm telling you by the, the spirit of God, Jesus is trying to tell you something here. He taught on the, on the kingdom for 40 days. I said, Lord, why were you given another 40 days? He said, the Father was paying me back for the 40 days of temptation in the desert. 
And he said, you go back and you tell the people that for every day that they're harassed by the devil, they get a day of power in the ministry. So a lot of us have years. Isn't it time to be known in hell without going there? Isn't it time that the devil gets tormented? Oh, you, you know, and you, you that have had me, you know, you've, you've heard me before, but I used to be afraid of the devil. And then one day the tables were turned and I was no longer a victim. Oh, I remember that day. When the, the poison that he had put before me, I just spun the table around, now it's in front of him. I go, go ahead and drink. And I, he had to drink his own poison. Paul, Paul the apostle, the, he's a big boy. You know, he's an apostle. I'm a pert. I'm not even an expert anymore. I'm a pert. He said, he said the powers of this age are coming to nothing. Jesus made a show of them openly. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Okay, and it says, be ye, Im ye imitators of God, his dearly loved children. I mean, okay, let's see here. And then Peter, in 2 Peter for chapter 1, he said, he said, these precious promises that we've been given, he said that we can, we can, we can uh, escape the corruption that's in the world caused by lust and be partakers of the divine nature. Did you hear what I just said? I mean, there's people that have, have been crucified for less than saying that. But did you hear what he, Peter said? He said, we can be partakers of the divine nature. Well, what does that mean? Well, let me tell you something. When you get to heaven, you're going to remember every word I told you. But you don't have to mess up. You can get this and change history. Do you want to change history? Okay, you can start right now. You have to make an adjustment inside of you. You are not a victim. Your enemy is the victim. If not, then why does he scream like a little girl when I'm about to cast him out of somebody? Why right now is he telling me, don't tell them this because we're going to lose them? Oh, yeah. When do you realize that you are born into this generation as a history maker? When are you going to realize that nobody in heaven is limiting you? Jesus already bought you everything. Jesus told me I'm not coming back and going through that again. It's done. I bought you out, Kevin. You're mine. He handed me a blank check, and he said, you name your price, and I will pay it. You are worth it. Because, see, I have value in heaven. You have value in heaven. The two things that I came back here with that you need to know so that you don't find out, because you might not have a second chance. I get a second chance. But I'm going to make the devil scream like a girl every day. I felt value with Jesus. He gave me value. Number two, he gave me security. I felt secure in his presence. I felt value in his presence. He loves me. And you know what? It took years to figure out. I thought I was his favorite. And so for years after that, I couldn't believe that people were treating me when I came back from heaven. I couldn't believe that people were treating me the way they were because I'm God's favorite. Because that's the way Jesus made you feel in his presence. So did you know that, that you, you know, and I'm just being honest with you. You know, nobody, did you notice that nobody wants to preach from 1 John anymore? Because it talks about not sinning in there at all. <laughs> we don't sin, it said, he said, John said. But if we do, you know, perchance. <laughs> Is anybody here? Yeah. What happened to 1 John? It's not being talked about anymore. I'll tell you why, because it's, it's hard. It's hard to grasp the fact that if you discern how much God loves you, you won't sin. Right. 
I saw that my born-again spirit, my human spirit, born again, one with God, I become one with him in spirit. According to Paul, he told the Corinthians, he said, if you join yourself to the Lord, you're one with him in spirit. Okay, is, is there any Greek scholar in here that can destroy that? <laughs> no. Okay, if that's the case, then, then who I am as a person, oh, get ready. I can identify with God more than I can identify with the devil. I identify with God because he's my father. Now, you gotta, now, help me out. Help me out. I was in heaven, and I only had one parent. And he was sitting on a throne. Help me out here. I don't have a mother in heaven. <laughs> I have a father. My parents were my genetically, they were biological. They gave me my earth suit. But my spirit came from God. Never heard anybody talk like this. My spirit came from God. He, he thought of me. Jesus, how could I make a mistake? He's right here. Three feet from me, I looked into his eyes, and he let you walk into his eyes. I walked into his eyes, and I watched him think of me. Is anybody here? He thought of me, and then he breathed me out, and my spirit went into my mother's womb. So I wasn't an accident. And did you know there were some people who didn't even know who my father was? But it didn't matter. I didn't come from here. I came from God. And I was going to go to hell in a church that never taught me to be born again. I was going to hell. And I didn't have to go to hell. My spirit came from God. No one in hell should be in hell. Jesus said that hell was made for the devil and his angels. It wasn't meant for man to go to hell. Okay. Am I okay? All right, so you got to hear this and you got to grasp this tonight because authority is not a feeling. Authority is who you are because God made you that way and he gave you, he deputized you. He gave you his name. So when the devil hears you speak, by, when you're speaking from down here in your spirit, he hears God's voice. If you're yielding to the spirit. If not, he laughs at you. He goes, I don't have to leave. Are you going to yield to the spirit? Are you going to walk in the spirit? Well, then it's impossible for God to be mocked. God's word is always true. It will always come to pass. If it doesn't, go look in the mirror. Because that's what I do. I do not. You know, I was, I was this close to him. I will never tell him that he failed. I will never tell him that it didn't work. My prayers became this. Give me the ability to receive from you. Give me the ability to grasp you, to understand you, to implement the truth that is from heaven into this body and into this mouth and walk as a person who's redeemed from death, hell, and the grave. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I, I, listen, death, just get over death. It's a promotion. They didn't even tell me how I died. It wasn't even told to me because it didn't matter. And the things you're worried about right now, a thousand year, years from now, it's not going to matter. What's going to matter is did you take what's in your spirit, your destiny, your dream, your vision that God gave you, who you are as a person is for this generation. And Jacob didn't discern it. Okay, that was my introduction. Now about angels. 
Now listen, Jacob wrestled with an angel, but you don't have to do that. You can grieve your angels. Just ask the one that God gave to Moses and the people of Israel. He said, he said I'm, I can't be among them. They're stiff-necked. Moses said, well, hey, I just want you to know, if you're not going to go with us, then we're not going. Why? Because Moses is smart. He knows. He said, you're okay, and you're going to be okay, Moses, but they are not going to be okay. He said, I'll send an angel. He said, but don't grieve him. Don't provoke him because he will not forgive your sin. He will not tolerate. Now, you're saying, well, that's Old Testament. Well, what, what about Hebrews? It talks about this, and it latches it to you. <laughs> don't be like them who through unbelief did not enter in, but fell in the desert. That's New Testament. They didn't enter in. So tonight, the biggest thing about angel ministry and about any kind of ministry, it has to do with you entering in. Well, how do you enter in? Well, God opens up the heavenlies to you. See, but he's already opened up the Holy of Holies to you. A new and living way has been opened to you through Jesus Christ. He's already gone in there, made a way for you, tore the veil. And now you go in there and you can encounter God at that level that only a high priest could. But so many people don't do that. Jesus said, now this is what you're going to find out. Jesus said this. He said the way is narrow and few find it. You won't hear that much anymore. There's a lot you won't hear much anymore, which is the reason why I'm working on a certain book talking about this right now. And it'll be out in two years. Because the devil doesn't want you to say certain things. He doesn't want you to believe certain things. And so I'm going to write a book about those things. The things that he doesn't want you to know about. There's a process of maturity. You can yield to it or you can learn the hard way. I don't need to watch people falling in the desert to figure it out. I don't need to lose any more friends because they wanted to go a certain way and I didn't. You know, it's amazing. My minister friends, mo most people, I, I can name the colleges, I can name the people. A lot, hundreds, are not in the ministry. They sat in the same class as I did, were told the same things I was told, and they did everything they were told not to do. I watched it. Is anybody else here? Yeah. I just had an apostle, an apostle from Sri Lanka call me. He was my prayer buddy in college. And we were, we were ridiculed because we prayed too much. I didn't know you could. And we would get to pray together. And he's from Sri Lanka. And we would pray, we would pray, and we couldn't stop praying. And, and um, I never saw him again, you know. He went back to Sri Lanka, and, and I, I went on to, a, you know, my next level of college. And um, he just called me. He called me two months ago. And he, he said, all our buddies are out of the ministry. I go, what? I go, well, what are you doing? He goes, well... He said, right after we said goodbye after graduation, he said, I, I got a call from my pastor. He said, um, there's a family emergency. I need you to take the church. So when he got back to that church, it had whittled down to 30. So he took it. He said, now it's 1,500. And I have 53 churches under me. Did you just hear what I just said? Okay, so we prayed too much? My roommate, Angel, another roommate, we prayed too much. You know what happened? One night, Jesus walked into the room, and we both fell, and we screamed, and we had an encounter. It changed my life forever. 
the holiness that was on Jesus was so strong that, that I, I, was, I was repenting of everything I could think of. Spirit-filled minister. Because the holiness of God was so strong and I felt, I felt my humanness. I was repenting. He was repenting. When I was in heaven, the holiness was so strong that there were places that I could hardly stand it. And I wasn't even in my body. There are things that Jesus told me that are impossible to happen, but they happened anyway. And so I tell you tonight, will you, will you please God by just believing the impossible? Will you please God you know, without faith, you cannot please God. You must believe that he exists, and you must believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. You know what happens when you just yield? You're the same all the time. You don't change. Right. One of my professors, he flew... He flew an airplane at the edge of space for many years, and they didn't even believe it existed. And when he was shot at, he, he was going the, the speed of a 30-odd six bullet. And he said, I just pushed up the throttle. We'd outrun the missiles. We stayed on course because we had the advantage. Well, are we seated in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus, or is, is Ephesians 2.5, is that in your Bible still, or did they take that out? <laughs> We're seated with him in the heavenly realms, right? Far above. See, whatever is bothering you, I mean, I, trust me, I, for 29 years, it didn't matter where I took off. When I reached, well, the first level was around 16,000 feet, but when I got to 35 or 37,000 feet, the sun was shining all the time. No matter what I took off in, the sun was always shining. There is a way to encounter God every day. But you have to allow the Spirit to take you to that realm. Because this realm, it has to do with a real cheap earth suit that you have that gives you trouble. It's your body. And, you go, and a mind that's not renewed because you don't spend enough time in the Word of God. What did Paul say? Romans 12, 2. He said, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so you have, you have your mind and your body that are having meetings without you at night, and they're going to vote you off the island. Your spirit's born again. You're alive to God, but your mind needs transformed. Your body needs to be disciplined. Paul said, listen, I beat my body daily. I discipline my body daily so that after I've preached Christ, I myself am not disqualified or thrown away, a castaway. He was a big boy. Now, he told the Corinthians, he said, I long to come to you, but Satan hindered me. So even Paul was hindered. Jesus wanted to heal people in his own hometown, but he was hindered. Can you believe that unbelief could hinder the Son of God? So, engage God and please Him by, by the things that you see that please God. Jesus said, you ought to take note of those things that I marveled at. They were, they were Gentiles. One was this, the woman in Samaria, and one was, this, one was the uh, centurion. He said, I haven't found this great a faith in Israel. He marveled at the woman who said, even, even the, 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 the master's dogs eat the crumbs. And the centurion said, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word. See, that's authority. Just speak the word and they'll be healed. Okay, so getting into your prayer life. 
as the Spirit wants me to talk about. And, and, and the way that angels engage you in your prayer life, they're waiting for you to agree with God because they already do. So you want a one-hour delivery from Amazon? Don't seek those things. Seek God. And all these things are going to be given unto you, Mark, in Matthew 6.33. Now listen to me. The Spirit's saying some things because he wants to help you. I don't have enough time. You're just as important. I was at a church that had 31,000 people in it in South Africa. I speak the same way I'm speaking to you. I speak in living rooms where there's 30 people. I speak the same way because everybody's important. But he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying. What did, what did the Spirit say? What did Jesus tell John? He who has ears to hear. He said it every time after he gave a message to one of the seven churches. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit said. Jesus said, listen, there's some hard things. They're hard. But if you can accept it, you should. And then he would say, this is hard. And it wasn't this way from the beginning. But it's because of the hardness of your hearts that God gave divorce. You ought to listen to these things because it'll show you. Oh, I'm telling you, the Lord just told me that you're going to go home and you are going to get in the saddle. He just told me that. You all are going to, you all are going to do this. You're going to engage God on his level. He brought you up to his level. Are you an imitator of God? I mean, you should be, right? What does that involve? It involves being in this earth realm having a belly button because you're legally here. So you know, the devil doesn't have a belly button. He, he illegally took your stuff. He took your world. He took the garden. He took all your stuff. And now you got to toil. And you really, this is embarrassing, but I, I found out that I was working for him. And he has it rigged to where you can't win at his system of debt. It's rigged. I had to have, Kathy and I had to have a supernatural event where someone paid off our house in order to get out of that system because it's got a death grip on it. Mor mortgage, mort gauge, death grip. And the Lord wants to take you out of these things. He doesn't want you hooked on pharmaceutical drugs. He wants you hooked on him. Now, now I know this. God is intoxicating to me. Jesus is intoxicating to me. I'm, I'm, I'm drunk right now. I am totally drunk in the spirit. Why? Because once you die... You can do nothing but live. You have to die to yourself. Now listen to me. If you weren't afraid to die, you would live. You would totally change the way that you look at life. If you couldn't fail, you would totally live differently. But see, the last thing that Jesus told me when I was with him, he sent me back. He asked me if I'd come back. And he said, if you go back for me, he said, you will not fail. It's going to be extra credit. That's what he told me. And I didn't want to come back. You want to know why? Because he let me turn and look back at the earth and I saw everything that you have questions about, about the demonic, I saw it all. I go, okay, ain't going back to that. I'm serious. He showed me the origin. He showed me the operation of the demonic. And 
And I saw how hard it is down here. So I know what everybody's going through. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that you got to switch it. you got to switch the position to where the devil's working and you're not. Now, th this is, this, there's, there's two things i got to tell you. When I came back, I was, kept, I was taken up again. And I heard an interview in an office in heaven. I was in a waiting room and I heard someone complaining about somebody. And I thought, this is, this is, this is a devil. This is the devil. What's he doing? He's complaining. He's accusing a saint. And Jesus was listening to this, and there's, there's this, I couldn't, I, I mean, I'm, I'm right there, and I could hear it down the hallway. I looked, and there it was. He's just pacing back and forth, complaining about accusing a saint. And he said, it's not fair. It's all rigged in his favor. He said, you gave him that airline job, and now he's going everywhere, and he's telling everybody about you, and, it, and, and I can't touch him. He said, he, he can't lose. And it's not fair. I can't touch him. And Jesus interrupted this, this ugly spirit and said, you know what? I've heard enough. Kevin can do what he wants. And I was ushered back to my, my room down here. And I realized, he's talking about me. He said, you got him that airline job, and now he's telling everybody. And, he, and then I thought, Wow. It totally changed my job. I stayed at my job 29 years. Because I realized that I had a purpose. That I can change history. I'm going to discern my inheritance. How about you? Are you going to discern your inheritance? Are you going to discern that there are forefathers in your lineage. Someone prayed for you. Someone stood for you. And what we're celebrating in this country is because of 200 people on a boat called the Mayflower that made a covenant with God. Is anybody here? Somebody made a covenant with God. 200 people on the Mayflower made a compact with God. And God is still keeping his word for those 200 people. We have an inheritance. We have a heritage. And, and there's nothing impossible if we'll believe. Now, it's amazing how Mark 9, 23, you can quote it. But how about if the head of the church tells you, Kevin, if you'll believe, nothing shall be impossible to you. And there's no asterisk by that statement where you go down the bottom of the page, except if this happens or if this happens, or if you don't feel like it that day. So this is how your prayer life changes. You say, not my will, but yours be done. But see, his will is far above anything you can ask or think. So I was believing for a car, and I was just going to be in humble, and I'm going to get a car because I need a car. No, I wasn't believing for a new car, but that's what I got for the same price. This stuff, kind of stuff has happened to me over and over again. Where you can't lose because you're not pursuing it. So when you pray, you yield to the Spirit, and the Spirit, what? In Romans 8 26, the, the Spirit takes hold of us in our weakness, not in our strength, in our weakness. He comes in and He takes hold of us, and He girds us up, and He gives us words to speak. When we're praying, a funeral prayer for somebody who's dead, and out of our belly comes, come back in the name of Jesus. You just spoke the words of life from heaven. Did you know that that's what I learned in heaven about prayer? <laughs> I learned how to pray. Thy will be done on this earth as it already is in heaven. The kingdom of God's doing fine. It doesn't even need your offering. It doesn't need. It doesn't need. 
you to do anything but believe. But see, the thing of it is, it is believing. There's no difference between action and believing. It's the same thing. Whatever you believe, you do. Oh, come on. Do you want me to start preaching and spitting at you? Because that's what these, the, the revivalists did. They said, faith without works is dead. You show me what you believe by what you do. It, there's no difference. Did you know in heaven, there's no difference between you, who you are as a person, and your word? They're the same. You're known by your word. It's who you are. Down here, Lisa's always late. Not this Lisa, but I just picked that. I'll just say Mildred. <laughs> Mildred's always late. And, and what they say, oh, that's just her. She's 20 minutes late. That's what she is. No, that's not her. That's a manifestation of selfishness. Because while I'm waiting 20 minutes for her, that's my time. No, listen to me. I have waited a whole hour for people to come to dinner that I was going to pay for. And when they showed up, I got up. And I said, the bill's paid for. i got to go. i got another appointment in three minutes. Because my appointments are, st are stacked like this. We do 15-hour days. Are, is anybody here? So, it, like, you, you were late, but, but it cost me. So I paid for the bill, and I got up. And I said, your bill's paid for. i got to go. You, you have to understand something, that there's no difference between who you are as a person and your word. Now, that, that's why faith is, 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 is not understood down here. Everybody, you know, takes seminars on faith. You buy the 12 DVD series, and you listen to it over and over again, and you're like, I still, you know why? Because, first of all, you don't understand a loving father. And, and, and then, God, then, then a loving father actually says, you, you can... You can do whatever you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. You can ask what you will. The word there is desire. There is no difference between who God is and his word. They're the same. So faith is based on a loving God that loves you, that keeps his word. He cannot fail. So manifestation comes in this realm. Your prayer times get real fun because you're changing history. Every time you pray, you're changing history. You're changing the course that is set if you don't act. If you don't act, you're going to go a certain way and nothing is going to happen. There's many Christians like that. They finish their life and they, they only have what they were given. They don't have any return to give back to God because they, they were afraid to invest. But I throw myself. Do you know how many years I've taken all the Christmas money I've had? And I tell my wife, this is going to that family of six in our church because they're not going to have Christmas. I don't want anything for Christmas. What are you, you going to spend on me this year? I said, write a check and give it to that, that, that family. I'm not afraid to do that. Why? Because I cannot lose. Because they can't pay me back. And what does, what does Jesus say? Give to those who can't pay you back. And when you do it, don't tell anybody. I mean, don't even let your right and hand, left hand know. Why? Because you put God in a position where he has got to pay you back. I just did it. I just did it. I just did it yesterday. I just gave my Christmas away. Do you see me worried? I can't lose. No, I, I mean, I really can't. If someone would walk in here with a gun pointed at me, I would walk right to them. 
because I've already died. This is going to be interesting. And I want him to get close to me because I'm going to take it off of him. Because he's going to be paralyzed. I'm not a, see, do you have to get past fear? You have to get past your limitations. You, your limitations are based in this physical realm. But in, in the spirit of God, there is no limitation. So your prayers become spirit-led. When we don't know what we should pray for, the spirit helps us pray with utterances that aren't even in intelligible speech. So prayer becomes fun. Amen. Now listen to me. I have not prayed for myself in 11 years now. I have not prayed any prayers except Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. And I pray John chapter 15. I don't ask for anything except those things. But why is it, now listen to me, why is it that all these good things happen to me. It's because God is good, not me. Because God's word is true. You can't fail. Is this helping anybody? I'm telling you this because I, I'm not, this is not a positive, uplifting message. This is life. In this world, you're going to have trouble, but, but it said, be of good courage because I have overcome the world. Well, when does that overcoming start to happen? Paul said, we are more, you know, Romans chapter 8, that's another one. I pray through that whole thing. In the Passion Translation, verse 1 says, there is now, therefore, no accusing voice because your case is closed. If your case is closed, then what are you worried about? See, this sounds too good to be true because that's what the gospel means. It's too good to be true. It's good news, but it's really good news. At the end of that, he said, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. Are you Christians? You have to believe what God said. But do you understand the implementation of this has to do with you believing? But see, your believer's broken because you don't know what a loving father's like. Psalms 139.5. It says in the Aramaic. It says, you go to my future and prepare the way. And then you come back around and you get behind me and you protect me from the hurt of my past. That's verse 5. You ought to put that in your pipe and smoke it. Because you'll be as high as a kite when you get a revelation of what I just said. You won't need drugs. David said in Psalms 23, you know, in, in Aramaic it says this. Listen. He said, you know, uh, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. You know, even though I walk through the shadow of death, you know, the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. This is what it says in the tra Passion Translation. It says, it says um, fear will not conquer me because you already have. So I ask you this because Jesus asked me this. He goes, Kevin, you have, you have pursued me. You have, you have sought me. You have paid the price. He said, what if I let you catch me? Well, that's what's happening right now. As I've been talking, he's going to let you catch him. And then he said, and what if I start pursuing you? <laughs> oh, man, I'm feeling it. So last week I woke up. I've been waking up at 2 a.m. in the morning. Somebody has to pray. And God would blow through all the people that were on that shift that haven't woken up. So I, I have, you know, I've got the pager. 
I'm on standby. And you're wondering, like, why I have so many angel visitations. Well, maybe it's because I answer my pager. So I started praying. And when I started praying, I heard a scream. I thought it was, I, it, sounded like, it sounded like someone was, was, was in pain. And I went like this to feel my wife to see if she was in bed. And she was. Because it was a blood-curling scream in my house. And I said, Lord, what? I said, that, was that in the other realm? And he goes, yeah, that was the devil. He, he just found out you woke up. <laughs> I'm serious. That's what he said to me. Don't be jealous. Because that's you too. I said, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> right? I said, so I started praying in, in the, the warfare tongues, you know. <laughs> Put a little salt in the wound there, you know, a little pickle juice. <laughs> And, I, and it's funny because the devil, you, you know, I know this. I know what you guys go through because I, I, I've gone through this, and I, I, I want to help you turn it. There's got to come a time where the battle turns. There has to come a time where you win. There has to come a time where you, you start to feel like you have leverage. Because the God I met, Jesus I met, he's not like how he's being preached down here. He's not weak. I mean, when you're talking to him, I wasn't allowed to use certain words, like try. There's not a word in heaven for try. I was told that God has never tried anything. <laughs> he thinks about it, he says it, and then he does it. And that's why it says that he does nothing except he speak to his prophets and tell his prophets first. So prayer becomes fun because the angels have been sent to do God's agenda. They have agenda that's God's agenda. Jesus, when he came here, he didn't do anything except what his father was doing. The works that I do, they were my father's. I don't speak. The words I speak, they're not my own. Okay. So why should we be any different? So I'm trying to expand you here a little bit. I just used the word try. Now I'm going to get in trouble. But the process is this. You have to get out of your own abilities and your own limitations, and you have to let the Spirit of God speak through you. Jesus has an amazing sharp edge about him. Everything he says is very, very sharp and cutting. And he wants you to be slim and trim. So when he speaks... He's, he's, he's trimming you. He's getting you to your fighting weight. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And he has anointed you to preach this gospel. People need to hear this. I had a president of my college. He was a pastor. He said, I trained what, what I'm talking about. The reason I'm talking like this is because I, I should have listened to him when he taught, but I didn't. So when I went to that and I met Jesus, I found out that everything that's in the Bible is true. Can you imagine that? And then I come back and I found out that if it doesn't work, guess whose fault it is? Not God's. This guy, he trained the ladies in his church to pray on Mondays. So on Sundays, he would announce, make sure you turn your prayer requests in for the ladies. They're going to be praying tomorrow for your prayer requests. It got to the place where they got everything that was turned into them. So he had to make an announcement, say, make sure that you want what you turn in. Are you hearing me? Now, I, this is not hearsay. I, I was within 15 feet when this guy told us. He said, I trained these ladies scripturally how to pray. 
to where the people got their answer. And he said, if you don't want it, don't turn it in. Make sure it's what you want. In Azusa Street, and all these different, I, I studied every revival, every person you could name, I studied them. It took a long time. I would fast for weeks and spend hours a day studying these people. And one of the common things that I found was is that these people accidentally slipped into a realm called the spirit realm where everything was possible. And they got what they call getting a hold of God. But see, God was getting a hold of them because they gave themselves over. So there were meetings where the speaker was designated by the Holy Spirit. And the people got up there. And if you weren't speaking by the Spirit, they told you to sit down. In the Old Testament, if you prophesied and it was wrong, you got killed. You got stoned. How many prophets would we have tomorrow? <laughs> Elijah list was just shut down. Because most of them aren't even operating at 40%. In the Old Testament, you were dead. But I can tell you right now, by the Spirit of God, that there is a new sheriff in town. And you've been deputized. And I'm telling you by the Spirit of God that things have turned and you are no longer a victim. Now everybody stand. Everybody stand to me. Now listen to me. If the power of God that rose Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you, then the Bible says that it will quicken your mortal body. Now, why is it? Help me out here. Why is it that I was believing for my kidneys? They were in failure. Why is it that I did not see my healing, but yet one day someone spoke the word, didn't touch me. I didn't give a $1,000 offering. And I got healed. And the person never touched me. Why is it that I woke up one morning and in 1982, when I had to go buy glasses and contacts, I cried the whole way home to my dorm in Bible college because I'm a Christian and I don't believe that I should have to wear glasses. And I was told I need glasses. And I cried all night because I'm a Christian. And Christians don't get sick. They don't, get, they don't need glasses. I don't believe this way, God. And now i got to wear glasses. I wore glasses from 1982 till last fall in September, a year ago. Do you know how many years that is? But I woke up one morning, and I went to the optometrist, and he said, your, eye, your, your right eye is almost completely perfect. Your left eye is almost there, but you might need to wear one contact. So the next morning, when I went to put that one contact in, the Holy Spirit said to me, I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> I go, perhaps I'm healed. And so I put it back in, and I've never put one in since. Now, what, no one prayed for me, no offering, you know, nothing. I wasn't even watching TBN. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead that's dwelling in you, it'll quicken your mortal body. So, what is it that's bothering you tonight? You see, the problem is, by the Spirit of God, He's already told me, you can all go to your... The problem is, first of all, you have separation anxiety. You're separated, separated from your Father in Heaven, and your spirit wants to go to Him. So you have anxiety right now. You're separated from your family in heaven. Okay, but you're down here. That's, that's number one. Number two is this. What you're encountering, the war that you're encountering, is because you are lethal in this generation. Now, I don't have time to pull you all out, but this is the word of the Lord. Trust me. I asked the Lord, I said, how am I going to do this? 
how am I going to go back and change the direction of this generation? And he said, you tell them of their value. I go, I'm listening. He said, each person I placed in them something that everyone else needs. So you have an automatic demand placed on you from everyone on your gift inside of you. That's your value is off the charts because you're in demand and you just don't know it. So the war you've been going through is for this very thing I'm talking about. The, the books that are written in heaven are about the manifestation of the kingdom of God through you. A relentless passion to fight for what is right and to believe God in impossible circumstances and see the world turned over. What was said about those that believed in the early church? They turned the world upside down. What you're going through, what you're encountering, it has to do with what's written about you in heaven. You see, your value has already been placed on you because there's a demand for those around you that need what you have inside of you. You have to manifest that those gifts. So what is it? What's your destiny? What is it that you have inside of you that must happen? Well, it starts right now. It starts with believing the impossible. It starts with relinquishing your own will and allowing the Lord God to resurrect in power your dreams. Resurrect them. Now, as I'm praying in the Spirit, now, I've been praying all day in the Spirit. I have been praying, I've been here at this church since 7.30. I have prayed in the Spirit all day. I have fought devils in that back room for you all. Why? And I don't even have to do this. I'm doing this for you. And I'm telling you, I broke the powers that you should be breaking, but I broke them. And there's a release that comes in this room right now. As the Spirit of God comes in and the angels of the Lord come in, you'll feel them. They've come. Be, they've come. What, what did they tell Daniel? They said, Daniel, your prayers were heard the day that you prayed, but we have encountered warfare. But in answer to your prayers, we've come. It always happens. Did you know that? When you pray, it always happens. You need to stand firm. Keep playing. You need to stand firm in all the will of God. Now listen. I'm not letting you go until you agree with me. I, don't want, I didn't want to come back. you got to understand something. You can't take away what happened to me. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do to me. You cannot take this away. Jesus Christ believes in you enough to send me back and to bring a message that's beyond your comprehension. And that message is, is that without me, Kevin, you can do nothing. But with me, you can do everything. And that's for you. Now, the prayer that comes from the Spirit is talking about the things that are not, but you're speaking them as though they were. He calls those things that are not as though they were. I'm telling you, all your needs are met according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. They really are. What you need is understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every foul lying devil. I break the powers. And now, Lord, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you is upon the people. And now the spirit of God is free. Raise your hand. Say, Lord, I acknowledge you in all my ways. And you direct my paths. My spiritual eyes are open. 
my ears, my spiritual ears are open. Open my book according to Psalms 139.16. Each one of my days was written in your book before one of them came to pass. Place your finger on today. Whatever it says, Lord, I agree with you. May it be unto me as you have spoken. doing some work just just stay still the Lord says I have loved you with an everlasting love there has never been a time where I have backed off I love you and what I have for you is much more than you can comprehend but I want you to trust me right now give me your heart I yearn for your spirit I yearn for you to hand your heart over to me fully. I want you fully. Whatever you're holding back, come up here and give it to me. Whatever it is, hand it over. What has ever come between me and you, says the Lord, hand it over. German friends, get up here. I, sa- I see you hiding. All my German friends, come up here. Come on. <laughs> there you are. You thought you could hide. Come here. These are my German friends. I see them over in Germany and then they appear here. <laughs> Kathy, come here. <laughs> okay Father thank you for the hungry hearts touch them Lord, by your spirit nothing is going to be impossible to you yeah it's time for the next phase it's time to expand where I'm taking you, there's no world. Father, just touch her and her husband. The Lord says, you will not be denied. You will not be denied. Continue to speak what you know is true. And you will not be denied. You will have it. The anointing of the Lord will be upon you in a greater measure as you begin to minister all through Germany, everywhere you go. As you just begin to speak to people. Oh yeah, it's going to grow. Ali Vori Nashana Mati. Ha ha ha. No, this is just the beginning. You watch what happens. You watch what happens. Oh, ne Kenny Balandrasha no Sita. Yeah, the yoke breaking anointing. The yoke breaking anointing. Doshe Karabara Drasha Dosa Bere Drasita Si Sibata. The Fioris, get up here, every Fiori. 
in this house. Come up here right now. I break every every demonic spirit that's followed this family line in Jesus name I break that power now in Jesus name every demonic spirit you're free you're free you're the, 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 the chain has been broken go ahead <laughs> yes, it's very intricate, but I'm leading and guiding you. You have nothing to worry about. It's all set up for you. You just continue to be faithful. And believe me, Things are moving out of the way for this family. Ha ha ha. Oh, paradrashata. Yitoti para betrashanosa. Yeah, increase. Yeah, increase. Increase. Nati koshira la banedra. Inno semanandrashana. Increase in the understanding and the anointing. No te kati te pati de poto puri pa. Yo no le entra de o de de le pe kari bora te le do. Every foul lion devil. Fear is gone in Jesus' name. No more voice. You have nothing hindering you at all. The limits are off. Dosha do ni bere dresha ta. Yeah, because you stood for your family, I'm standing for you. Ha ha ha. Oh, Sharabara Drasha. Shindra Sutas Kisuta Sada. Kimeli Drasha Da. Ha ha ha. All of the economy and Drasha. No? Yeah. The Lord says, It's my economy. It's my economy. It's my economy. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you, Father. Don't leave Sarah. Don't leave Sarah. Don't leave Sarah. Just stay there. You got multi kind of men in there. She knows. In she meet up to the class. You don't sit down. Listen, this is what the Lord just said. Listen to me. He said, you don't take ground back that you've already got. You don't take ground back a second time. Okay? Whatever you obtain here tonight, put a stop the last line it's not going back what you have achieved tonight you don't you don't go back there is witchcraft against them and this family and they're not taking back land that God already gave them they're going forward the Fioris are going forward God sent Sarah here to live. She cut my hair, which only took like three minutes, but she cut my hair in Germany. And the next thing you know, she's here in Wisconsin. 
God sent her here with her husband, and then she brings friends from Germany, okay? Because God's doing something. But see, Sarah is called as a standard, as a plumb line. It's a, her secret is she does hair. That's her, that's her cover. But she's a, she's, you, the Lord says that you are an agent of me, says the Lord, and you are a plumb line. And so are you. I remember in, in Switzerland, I called you out. Do you remember that? Well, and I said second phase right now. You're in America now. Can you believe this? And the Lord's saying second phase coming. You thought, you know, you're not even the same person. And now God says, oh, that's nothing. What I'm about to do for you is amazing. You're going to get your dream. You're going to get your dream. The Lord says, do, do not take no for an answer. You will not be denied. Hold on to that which I have taken hold of for you, says the Lord. I've taken hold of your future. Do not let go. Fiori, stand by. Stand by. Nicole Menandranshanota. Oh yeah, you just entered into the, the realm where everything is, in, is possible now. The realm where possibility is commonplace. Because your faith has been tested and you have passed. You've been promoted. Exceedingly above. All you could ask or think is yours. Shana Menendrashita. The Volms, come here. I want you, I want you to break witchcraft. If anybody knows what about witchcraft, you know about witchcraft. I want you to break witchcraft over these people right here, these Fioris. Would you pray for them? The Lord, the Lord is, is setting you. You're, you're going to the next level. You understand the spirit realm. Okay, so you can go ahead, Kathy, pray with her. Pray for the Fioris. Break, break this. There's an assignment against this family. And it's done. It's, it's broken tonight. You reinforce it. Okay, now listen to me. Now listen to me. The Volms. Listen, over here. These, these, this couple, this couple has... You know, I, I wish they were my parents because they know how to fight the devil for their kids. My parents were never trained that way. These people, I watched them fight for their children, for their son. And I want you to know that I got a revelation of the Father God through this couple that I had never had before. They would call me and say, we need to pray for my son. He's going to, and, and, and it was, I was constantly engaged with what God was doing in this family from the phone, and it touched my life forever. So now the Lord says, because you have stood, you have stood. Psalms 112, verse 3 says, great and mighty shall your offspring be on the earth. And the Lord will reward you openly for what you have done in secret. Your days of reward are starting. And now you shall see the fruit of your labor. The enemy could not overcome. And now it's time for him to pay. Now it's time for him to pay dearly as you drive him out constantly out of people's lives everywhere you go everything you do it's so anointed set apart I know what I'm saying and I know what I see there are angels that have been assigned to make sure that everything you do affects this generation
nothing, nothing goes unnoticed and nothing shall fail. The Lord is with you in a great and mighty way. And the angel of the Lord encamps about you. And things are going to change. The things are going to start to turn in a greater way because it's time. The Lord is not going to stand back and be mocked by circumstances. The fire, the fire has begun to burn in your life. The fire, the fire, the fire that consumes the holy fire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you just wait. You just wait and see what I do for you.